Okay, uh, welcome back. It's been a little while since I made a video. I'll make another video kind of talking about that, but mostly wanted to get back in here to talk about a class I just passed, which was Applied Algebra, or C957. So let's just get right into it. Okay, so time to pass. Took me about one week with about an hour of study each day. And that hour of study was mostly just refreshing my memory. Resources. Cohort videos. Those are super, super important. If you want to try and get around having to study the actual course material, I would say the cohort videos are your best option. They are very, very uh, straight to the point maybe about an hour tops for most of them. I think one of them is even 30 minutes. But I would also suggest you answer all of the questions in the videos. Um, I believe the instructor is named Odin, and he does a really good job at explaining the concepts that you need to understand and applying them to the scenarios that the questions are presenting. So those are the only resources I used. Those are the only resources I feel like you need to use in order to pass this class. So there's that. Okay, and my approach. So right out the gate, I took the PA just to see where I was, and I didn't pass by a few questions. Um, I saw the areas that I needed to focus on, which were uh, validity of models, rate of change, and honestly, just reading the questions more carefully. Sometimes I would look at a graph and I would see what I thought it wanted me to answer when the wording was just a little bit different in the actual question. So um, my mistake, totally my bad. I just need to read the questions a little bit more uh, carefully. And then it would have been totally fine. Uh, I probably would have passed the first time if I read the questions a little bit more carefully. Um, so after that, I watched all four cohorts, which broke the topics down very well, like I said a little bit earlier, and then I took the PA again and passed. Um, if you're trying to watch all the cohorts, you could probably get them done, um, let's see, probably in about a day. If you only wanted to watch those and try to pass a test, um, they're not, like I said, they're not too long, pretty straight to the point. And if you wanted to use other resources, I believe there are some Khan Academy videos embedded in the course material. Um, so it's pretty, pretty easy to get through. Um, after that, I took the PA again, and then I passed. So after I passed, there were still some areas that I felt like I needed to work on. So I watched some cohort videos again, and then just did all the practice questions that were presented in the videos. And... Yesterday, I took the OA and scored either competent or exemplary in each area, and overall, I think I was just a few questions shy of scoring exemplary, which isn't a big deal, but I felt like I maybe could have done a tiny bit better, got an exemplary score. But that's neither here nor there. I passed. Okay, so probably what a lot of you are here for is the difficulty level. So I would say if you haven't taken a math class in a while, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult if you haven't ever or haven't done polynomials, exponential um, functions, things like that in a while. It might be a little bit more difficult to grasp some of those concepts, but most of, I believe, this material is pretty much plug and play in your calculator as long as you know how to use it. Um, I use a TI-83+. plus. Um, it's like a graphing calculator from Texas Instruments, and that did a lot of the heavy lifting. So if you have a calculator, I would say just use it because most of the stuff you're going to need to do is just plugging into a calculator. Um, in one of the videos, Odin, the instructor, recommends a calculator, and I can't remember the name of it specifically, but watch that video and then make sure you pay attention to the buttons that he presses because there's like one button that has like an e to the power of x and that one's kind of hard to get to if you don't know where to look so watch out for that 
Um, if you're pretty good at math, you've taken a few math courses, this should honestly be kind of like a breeze. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, like I said, it should probably be a breeze. I wouldn't consider myself like the best at math, but most of this stuff felt like refreshers. So there's that. Um, and it was way easier than applied statistics and probability. Um, so if that was a tough class for you, this one should be a little bit easier. Okay, and things to know. So I like to, this is like a very high level overview of what you should know. But basically, um, you should know functions like the back of your hand. So I just kind of did some examples here and kind of translated them so that you can visualize what you're doing when you're in when you're answering these questions. So basically a function is in this one here, the top one, um, a of x is equal to a. Basically you just need to know that the x, so what's inside the parentheses, is the input and the a is the output. So if you see a function a of x is equal to and then they have a question to the side, just know that if you put these in an ordered pair, the a is going to be what's on the y-axis right here, and the x is going to be what's what the input is, so in the x position. However, don't get comfortable with having an x as the input because sometimes they will put random um, letters in random places. So to visualize that, if they give you two uppercase letters by chance, and you have something that's like b of n is equal to b, and they ask you, what is the input, what is the output, put it in an ordered, in an ordered pair. Just remember, anything that's in the parentheses here is going to be the input. Anything that is on the outside of the parentheses or on the other side is going to be the output. And if they ask you to put it in an ordered pair, which they didn't, but if you're going to be looking at graphs and looking at functions at the same time, essentially you're looking for an ordered pair. So the n in this situation, so what's on the inside of the parentheses, is going to be the x, and the b, which is outside of the parentheses or on the opposite side, is going to be the b. So pretty simple, high level, like I said, high level overview of functions and just understanding them. But if you understand functions, you can look at them and know what's the input, what's the output, and how to put that on a graph, you'll do just fine. And most of the time, the graph is going to be given to you. You're not going to have to make a graph, so don't worry about that. OK. Another thing you want to know is rate of change. A lot of times you're going to be presented with a question and practiced exams or something like that, and they'll give you a graph and two points, and you'll just have to give the rate of change. So the rate of change is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And whatever you get, you'll put in the top. So let's say you have y2 is 100, so we'll do y2 as 100, and y2 will be the second point that you're given, so usually the point furthest to the right, I would imagine, if they're giving that to you. So that second point, the y is equal to 100, and the first point, the y is equal to 10, then you would do 100 minus 10 over, let's say, x2 is... 6 and x1 is 1, you will get 90 over 5. And then you would essentially just simplify that. And for questions like these, even though they're like pretty simple, I would just say plug them into your calculator just so you get an accurate answer. And then you would select the rate of change equaling 18, because that's how many times five goes into 90. So that would be your rate of change. So basically just know y2 over y1 over x2 minus, minus x1. Sorry, I probably said that weird. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's your rate of change. Know that by heart. Or just write down on your board after you start the test. Okay, another thing you're going to want to know is concavity. Did I... It's not concativity, right? It's concavity. So just concave, 
um, and the different kinds of concave graphs. So I'm really sorry about how unorganized this page is, but basically you have two kinds of concavity. You have concave up and concave down. So the way that you're kind of taught how to use it is um, concave up will look like a smiley face, concave down will look like a frowny face. And so if you look at, let me change the color, sorry, this section right here, what this translates to is on this side, this is a con decreasing concave up graph. And essentially it is decreasing slower and slower. As you can see, as it gets close further to the right, it kind of stabilizes and slowly just increase, uh, decreases, right? So that's what that this one is. Uh, so this next one, and I really apologize if this doesn't make any sense, just please skip over it, is a increasing concave up graph. So it is increasing concave up, and it is increasing faster and faster. So you can see it's like an exponential function. It is starting off a little slow, but then it shoots up and it keeps increasing faster and faster. So basically how I would remember this is just going to the test. Remember, smiley face is concave up. So if it asks you, is this, show me a point that is concave up. If you see something that is increasing, what looks like at an exponential rate, really, really fast, that is increasing concave up and is increasing faster and faster. So now to the concave down graphs. So like I said, these ones here kind of look like a frowny face. And this concave down graph is increasing concave up. And this is increasing slower and slower. So as you can see, like the other one, it is increasing. However, it starts to like level out and slowly just increases from there. So it looks like the top left half of a smiley of a frowny face it is increasing concave up and it is increasing at a slower and slower rate so this next one right here is decreasing concave down and it is decreasing faster and faster as you can see it starts at one point and then it just starts shooting down and it's shooting down fast so yeah that is concavity and it is kind of just the other thing you're going to need to know again you're just going to need to also just understand graphs understand functions and how t functions translate onto graphs certain points watch out for um i guess maybe something else to watch out for is wording because wording and then also um, x-axis and y-axis labeling. Um, is that the British way to spell it or is that just wrong? I don't know. Uh, a lot of times you'll have a graph that is labeled like, oh, the y-axis is like 100, 200, 300, 400. A lot of times you will see these and then maybe you don't notice that it is showing you in millions. And that is very important to know because you will be given a multiple choice question. And let's say you're looking for X point here and you're like, oh, it's 100 and it's 100 million and you select the wrong one you're gonna get the question wrong. And I know that it's like pretty simple, it should go without saying, but sometimes you get in a rhythm and you're not maybe paying attention to a lot of things and you just don't read it all the way through or you don't pay attention to the labeling and you'll get that question wrong. I did that the first time I took the PA. Like I said, this is mostly just self-reflection, but I figure it never hurts to say. So watch out for wording, make sure you're paying attention to what is actually asking you and then honestly you should be fine. Like I said, it took me about a week with one hour of studying each day. Probably could have knocked it out in a day if I sat down and really just did it, but 
that wasn't the case. I didn't do that. So overall, good class, quick class. Great to knock it out. This is uh, three out of four classes for me. My term ends in August. So end of August will be the end of my term. I have a micro class that I'm working on, and I think I'm going to try to knock out one more class. Don't really know which one yet, but my goal is to get five. I did not accelerate nearly enough as I did nearly as much as I did in my last term. That's okay. I was really hoping to be done by this term, but things get busy, life happens. So yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, thank you a lot for tuning in. I'm really sorry for the inactivity. I wish I could have been more active with school this term, but that's just not how it's panned out. But I am working and striving to be done by the end of 2023. That is my new goal. And I think I can do it. I think I have about maybe like 10 classes left. So keep an eye out. I'll be posting more videos. And if there's any questions you have, feel free to write them in the comments. And I will try to address them as they come in. All right. Thank you.